Hey guys, it's Kaylin Anderson and welcome back to my channel, Poor Special Events, where we talk about all things mobile businesses, specifically mobile bartending. If you are new to our channel, welcome. Um, you can scroll through all my playlists and go through some of my most popular videos and kind of see what this whole mobile bartending business is about. If you are already on your mobile bartending journey, maybe uh, you have some of the similar things going on in your business that I have. And hopefully these videos can kind of help you if you're um, going through any stumbling blocks in your, your journey. Um, and if you're new, welcome, we're excited to have you. So let's get started. Um, if you find any of this content helpful, please hit that subscribe button. It's super important and it helps me continue this channel. Um, I love how organically this channel has grown over the last year of me just posting videos. Um, I read all of your comments. I try and respond to them, any questions that you have. And a lot of your questions actually inspire my future videos. So thank you so much for all of the comments and the questions and subscribing um, and just kind of communicating with me about your journey. It's been great. So for this video, I want to talk about a couple organizational things that have been super important to helping uh, my company grow, helping me stay organized in our crazy busy season. We are in the thick of wedding season now. Um, I can, you know, counting down the weeks until we hit kind of November and we kind of chill out a little bit. Um, but with that, we need a couple more organizational things. So I've talked in previous videos about um, using a like a Google Sheet, so an Excel spreadsheet, and listing all of the clients that we have or will be having um, and doing a new tab for each year. So like I'm already filling up my tab for 2024. I'm revisiting my 2023. As we go through each event, I can cross them off that they're done. Um, in that sheet, we talk about like what staff will be there, what packages they've chosen, when their event is, what day of the week that is, their location. I kind of put all that specific information. So once we have all that in there, and it kind of helps me at a glance look at, you know, what's on our roster, what's coming up next, who is going where, and what is ultimately needed. Then we get down to that one month mark. So the next piece that we look at is, um, okay, we've hit the one month, one month mark. Chances are the client has a total guest count by now. They have an idea of what they would like to serve. Um, and now they wanna talk with me about, hey, what are they supposed to be purchasing? How much are they supposed to purchase? Logistically, what all do I bring or do I not bring based on the packages that they've chosen? And we need to have that final phone call. So a couple of things that I take with me into the final phone call. Um, one is our packing list, which I've made, and I will kind of share some examples of that with you. And then another thing is I'm so old school. I like writing things down. I cannot be typing and talking at the same time. I just, I just can't do both. So paper and pencil, and I go through, and I ask certain questions in a certain order. So I've also talked about this in, in other videos too, of like what questions I ask, and I've reviewed that in some of my videos, like what that looks like. So I'll quick go through it here now. Um, when we get into that phone call, we talk about their overall timeline for the day. It doesn't have to be crazy specific, but I need to know when their ceremony starts. So that gives me an idea of when we need to set up by, um, when it ends. So this way, if I have staff there and it's not me, they have an ending time. So they just know, you know, what's going on. If there's anything special going on with cocktail hour, if there's anything going on during dinner hour, like maybe they have to close the bar during dinner or anything like that, making sure we know those things. Then we proceed into the drinks. What drinks are they gonna serve? What are they looking to have? Maybe do they have questions or do they want help figuring out a cocktail menu or a mocktail menu? Um, if we are providing mixers and consumables, I go through and I double check with them that the mixers we would typically bring would be fine if there's anything special they need on top of it. One example of a specialty mixer would be like ginger beer. So if we're doing Moscow Mules, um, we're gonna need ginger beer, which is not a typical mixer that we would bring. If we're doing standard mixers, typically we talk about like a general Coke or Pepsi product, a diet option, ginger ale, Sprite, um, a couple juice options, and then any like simple syrup or sour mix or if we need stuff to make, you know, if someone wants to do margarita bar, um, again, specialty things. So getting all of those things down and organized. So I have that list, I have that total head count, I know what they want now, um, and now I can go into either sending them out totals of like this is how much you need to get, or if we're already past that, I can go into filling out our packing list and filling out our preference sheet. So the next two uh, pieces of information that I use here are taking that written document that I check and scratch down while I was on the phone with the client, and I'm gonna put it into a typed up 
preference sheet. This is super important because it helps me take all those things that I just scribbled down, get them organized on paper, nice and neat, get them typed up, get them printed, and then any staff that could be working that event or any anybody that's working that event can literally pick up my preference sheet and know what's expected. So I literally start with who our clients are, where they're gonna be having their event, how many people they're gonna have, what the bartender's names are gonna be for the event, over any overall timeline things like um, I have one in front of me right now. They're starting right out of the gate with welcome drinks at five o'clock because they will technically already be married the day before. This is just a reception, so that's something different. So my bartenders have to be ready and prepared for when it starts at five, they are serving at five. So that's something important to know. It's not like there's a ceremony where they have a few minutes ahead of time. When clients, when guests show up, they are going to be using the bar. Um, what drinks they're gonna have, the breakdown of the liquor options, any signature uh, cocktails or mocktails, wine options, mixers. I literally put everything on the preference sheet so that the bartenders know exactly what they have and don't have, what's expected of them, what's not expected of them. I talk about um, any other info that's needed. So for instance, at this location that this event is gonna be at, um, there's a specific place where you know they're expected to the trash cans behind their bar they're expected to take those trashes out um, there's a spot where they put that trash make sure that they're replenishing you know there's trash bags there um, where the refrigerators are with the freezers for the extra ice um, what things they need to kind of clean out wipe down and leave there because they're doing an event for me and I have to go back to pick things up um, what I expected cleaned out, how I expected everything packaged up and organized in one, you know, location behind the bar. So this way when I go to pick up the next day, it's all in one spot and I can just grab it and go. So all of that goes on our preference sheet. And then that preference sheet is sent out to the bartenders and then I have a copy for myself. So everybody's on the same page. And then with the preference sheet, we do a packing list. So my packing list is up to four pages now. And my packing list um, at the top, again, we, we say who our client is, the date of the event, what kind of event, how many guests in their location. And then from there, we go through and I literally have like a checklist. And on the checklist, um, it starts with our go box. So I've talked about this a little bit and I've showed you how we like pack go boxes. But um, our go box is all of the things like aprons, tip jars, paper towels, wet wipes. Um, do we need stirring straws, and, stirring straws and beverage napkins? Do we need a cutting board and a knife? Um, any wine or beer bottle openers? Can openers uh, in case we have cans of juice that need to be opened? Uh, always a first aid kit. Any shakers or stirrers, um, cups, strainers. Having our business card signs. Um, if they're doing consumables and they need cups, do they need nine ounce or 12 ounce or both? So that really runs through a lot of things that are on this. And all we have to do then is say like the quantity, how many, and if it's needed or not. And then I can go up to my, my storage space. I can start packing and as I pack it, I check off that I've packed it. And then this uh, packing sheet goes with the preference sheet to the event because then my bartenders know what I gave them and what I did not give them. They will also know what is ours to take home and what is not to take home and they'll be able to make sure everything's cleaned up and packaged and organized right. So this way when I pick it up, I know I have everything I need in that one location. We also have some of our rental items on here. So when we do hydration stations, it'll say like, yes, they need a hydration station. There's a spot, you know, is it lemonade, water, iced tea? Um, our coffee station, if we need coffee and hot tea, um, how many coolers we need to bring, how many ice scoops we need to bring. Do we need to bring a wagon to move all of these things? Like, are we able to get right in the venue? Do they have any kind of carts or do we have to like drag things a long ways? Um, are they using any of our rentals, keg trailer, mobile bar, um, whiskey barrel bar, uh, our easy up tent? Are they renting glassware? Do they need any kind of glassware? Do we have to provide any glassware? Then we get into our garnishes, what kind of garnishes they need or want, any mixers they need or want. Um, and then on the back, we look at any kind of specialty syrups or like we have simple syrup, bitters, grenadine, blueberry, peach, raspberry, or lavender syrup, um, salt and sugar rimmers, sour mixes, any of those things. And then I leave a spot on the back with just blank lines 
that I can fill in anything extra that they may need that I didn't get on there. But so far, this has been an exhaustive list of all of the possible things that we could be bringing in. And I take notes on it and I have it all set up and it's good to go for the bartenders. So after I communicate with the couple and I have everything set with the couple within one month of their event, then I make these up for my sanity and also for my bartenders. And then they can ask me any questions that they may have, um, but then they should be ready to go, which is great. So these things are super important. Having a preference sheet, having a packing list, having your final phone call with your client, um, and just being really organized because you'll start taking on a few events at a time possibly and it just gets to be a lot you'll be at different venues on the same day and you want to make sure that you're as organized and as efficient as possible so that nothing gets messed up and everything is perfect for your clients because it's super important so these are just some of the things that i've been using to keep myself organized um, if you find something that works for you or if you have questions about using these things please let me know i would be happy to answer any questions that you have Hopefully these work for you. Um, I would love to start offering these up, like these documents and things on some kind of an online store or something, if that makes sense for everyone where you could go and you could just kind of get what you need. Um, whether you wanna see what our packing list looks like, how we structure our preference sheets, um, how we structure the phone call um, that we have with the client, kind of getting all those things in place. Yes, we use HoneyBook online for all of our payments and all of our contracts, our proposals, invoicing, all those things. But at the end of the day, you're still communicating with client. You still have to give something to your staff so they know what to do. So this has just been the way that works for me and that seems to be working well. Um, I'm sure there's other ways that this could be done, but I just choose to do it this way because it, it's working out and it keeps me organized and I can still have my papers in front of me because I'm someone that needs to have it in my hand so I can see it um, carried around with me at the event, know what's going on, knowing the timelines, um, and just being able to quick reference if you know I need something or I'm missing something and I can see it right on the document and I don't have to go looking online for it. Um, because as all of you know, if you guys are already in this industry or if you're a bartender in general, once you get behind that bar, once people know that you're around, you're in work mode then. There's no more prep time, there's no more setup time. Like you will have clients just like coming out of the work work ready for you to, to serve your drinks and it, it gets to be a lot. So being prepared ahead of time is huge. I'm going to be uh, working on some other videos here. Please let me know in the comments things that you wanna see or talk about. Um, any other questions that you may have are super helpful. As always, please hit that subscribe button if you find this content useful and helpful. I would really appreciate it. And let me know what you want to see next. But I'm Kaylin with Four Special Events. And thank you so much for watching. And I will be talking to you soon. Have a good day.